Should you pay off your mortgage before you retire? Well, here to talk with me about this is Bo Kemp from Sensible Money. Bo, welcome. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for having me again. Oh, it's a pleasure. And uh, as we know, this is like one of the more common questions that people ask as they're on retirement's doorstep. Uh, where to begin? Yeah, this is a lot of retirees, people nearing retirement. They they do ask this question a lot. And it really stems from, I mean, think about it. So your monthly, you think about your monthly expenses. Most people, their biggest one is their mortgage payment. And it's like, oh, if I could get away from this mortgage payment, I would feel so good, right? Like it's a such a big burden on us at times. And so when these questions come up, there's, there's a few factors that I like to focus on that, you know, it's, in my opinion, it's important to run your plan both ways. So as you're building this retirement plan, it's ask yourself, what if I were to pay it off? Or what if I just stuck with the payments and then see the impact? And then you can, you can analyze and bring your values into what the numbers are telling you as well. But there's, there's generally some main factors that, you know, we can give you some rule, rules of thumb, but at the end of the day, running the plan both ways is going to be the best bet for you. Right. So uh, factor one is uh, what? Factor one would be start thinking, you need to realize where are your assets actually located. And so, the, and this is something that not everyone understands at first because they've saved their whole entire career most of their assets are in that traditional 401k eventually is going to get rolled over into their IRA. And when, when, if this is the case for you, I mean, depending on how much left you have on your mortgage balance, right? Like say it's $250,000, that would be a big lump sum distribution that gets taxed at your ordinary income tax rates. And so you want to look at it and say, if really all my assets are in this traditional tax deferred bucket that we like to refer to, maybe we need to, not do a whole lump sum that first year and smooth it out. So we want to, especially if, if we're paying, say you're in the 20, in the 22% bracket, you go up to the 24, that's a pretty common one. I know it's only 2%, but it makes a difference. And we can spread out that extra 2% across the next five years, keeping you in that 22% tax bracket. That's, that tends to be more beneficial for people. So your ordinary income tax rate is important, especially if it would be coming from that, traditional tax deferred bucket. Yeah. What if it's other from people, a taxable account? Yeah. Yeah. So other people, if they have, you know, you have your taxable accounts or your savings accounts that have built up along the way, that's, that tends to make more sense. Those are the plans where paying off the mortgage tends to look a little better. Not always, but it's primarily because you don't face that ordinary income tax bracket. The thing to keep in mind though, is there is long-term realized gains that you may have to pay. And so th those, those tax rates are different. Sometimes you might be able to realize enough gains to where you don't pay any tax on it. There's a 0% long-term capital gains bracket. The next one's 15%. So it's still not a huge amount, but it's still, it's still a cost to you. So again, it's look at how, how the lump sum distribution would affect your tax rate. And then if you can mitigate and keep your taxes at a lower amount by spreading this out over five years, maybe that makes more sense to you. Yeah. Uh, there are other factors to look at? Yeah, the second factor that this is, this is a big one for me, especially right now, given the, envir given the environment we're in, but most mortgages, they're going to be, they're a fixed rate. We'll just pretend we have a $2,000 monthly mortgage and there's purchasing power involved. And so when we think about, you've, you've, we've all probably heard that the saying a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. And where that comes from, it's this, these, these thoughts around there's good debt and bad debt. And some people agree with these philosophies, some people don't. But where it comes from is this mortgage rate is fixed. And so that $2,000 a month that you have paying your mortgage, that's going to cost you less in purchasing power in 10 years versus it, what it does today. And so we really need to take into account and remember if, especially right now, inflation has been high for the past couple of years, maybe it doesn't make as much sense to do it right away. Maybe we wait till an, un, wait until inflation comes down a little bit and back to our long-term averages. Mm -hmm. during, the, during periods where we don't have much inflation, like a long time before the past few years, right, we didn't really have much inflation at all. This factor doesn't hold as much weight, but it's still something to consider because... 
if you still have five to 10 years left on a mortgage, and I say that because that's, that's pretty common as people are nearing retirement. They, have, they don't have a full 30-year mortgage, but they still have some years left. And we just think about, okay, how, how does my purchasing power change from now until then throughout the rest of the mortgage duration? Uh, other factors to consider as well? My, my last thought is really around your opportunity cost. And so if I'm going to take out this lump sum distribution, what am, I, what am I giving up? So you need to ask yourself, what am I giving up for this? And so the, the pro around it is you don't have that big monthly payment anymore and that, that big debt burden. The con is now there's, we'll go back to that $250,000 example. Now there's, now there's $250,000 that doesn't have the opportunity to be invested and grow. So, so if we have, you know, I've been using the five to 10 years, if we have five to 10 years left, think about how would you actually invest these assets over those five to 10 years versus paying it off. Some people lean right away towards, well, I can get 10% in the stock market. Well, if you only have five years left, that's probably not going to be in the stock market. I wouldn't put any of that in the stock market. It would all be built in, into bonds. And so then I'd ask, well, what are bond yields right now? And then you compare it to what your mortgage rate is. And so a general rule of thumb would be, if my expected rate of return on these assets is greater than that mortgage rate, I wouldn't pay it off. And again, this is a rule of thumb. I, I, don't, I don't love rules of thumb because you, you can't take that with complete weight because that doesn't take into account factor one that we discussed in terms of taxes, right? And so that's why I'm like, throw the plan in both ways, but these are all questions that you should be asking yourself or your advisor to, to consider. And it's, it's understanding, understanding how each decision impacts you. Yeah. So these are like multi-dimensional factors that one needs to consider. Uh, there is no one size fits all answer, obviously based on what we just described. Um, there is, uh, I'll, let me just go back to your point one about the expense of a mortgage. In many cases, when I look at, for instance, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they do the Consumer Expenditure Survey, and they routinely show that folks are paying uh, a third of their expenses devoted to housing costs. Now, that could include uh, mortgage, HELOCs, um, uh, property and casualty in insurance, perhaps, or even real estate taxes, but still one third of, uh, of all your income going toward <laughs> housing. And if you can get rid of the mortgage expense, maybe you can at least then drop down that uh, percent of income that's being used for housing expenses. Yeah, yeah, that'd be and think about how, how good that would the weight off your shoulders if you didn't have that. And there's, there's plenty of advisors out there that their main goal is let's get the mortgage paid off before we retire, you know, and they, they have a good point around it because of that right there. Then it's now, now it's less, less that we have to withdraw from your assets over the long run, but there's also times where it doesn't make sense. And so that it's, there's every fine, and it's every question that we get, right. It's always like, well, it depends. Let's run it through your, your plan and run, see the situation. But yeah. It is a huge expense that you face, and that burden is it, – it can take a toll on people. Yeah. So one, one other question. People – we didn't discuss this, but I'm curious for your thoughts. A lot of times people look at not only uh, how the money would be invested relative to the, your mortgage, but how fast or quickly your house is appreciating in value. Now, most people will say it's a use asset, not an investment per se, but it does appreciate and depreciate over time. Does that factor into your analysis at all, Bo? Yeah, it that that does as well, and that kind of comes back to that purchasing power. It's almost like you're buying an investment with leverage. It, it, well, it is. It, it is leverage. But you know, when we when we look at people's plans and their retirement plans, we we revert back to their household balance sheet. So yes, the yes, the home equity is we're not using it for spending right away, but it is an asset for you. And so that that asset can grow, and the power of leverage due to that payment being less over time. Your home equity towards the end would be generally that's when we're bringing it in, into plans when we need it of, you know what, maybe we have some some big health care costs coming up, right? So you just got done with your big mortgage payment and guess what? Now we're aging. So now we have now we have to worry about bigger health care costs. So those those are all factors that come into play. Yeah. Well, we covered a lot of ground. Anything we missed or anything that just bears reemphasizing? No, I think the only thing that I would throw out there is me personally, I... I'm more statistically driven, so I would have the numbers talk to me. 
but that's not always the case for everyone. And so when you bring these questions to whether it's you doing it on your own or your your advisor, there's there's your values that need to take into account as well. I've seen, I've ran plans where I've said this doesn't make sense to do. The client still wants to do it, so we we pay the mortgage off. You know, as as long as it's not hindering the long term performance of your plan to where it's like really hurts your chances of having a successful retirement. Yeah. Bringing those values into play with those numbers will help guide that decision for you to where you have it, the whole goal is to not have stress in retirement. That's that's the last thing we want. Yeah, the the common phrase being peace of mind uh, may outrule some of the statistics that you're referring to. Yeah, and, uh, mm-hmm. and so I, I think you're you're right, and and it's hard to sort of forecast in advance what the right decision is, right? You can only look back in hindsight and say <laughs> that was a good decision. I think so. That's the that's, other thing at least I think about. That is true. That is true. And that, that is a lot of the job is we're projecting and using assumptions. And, you know, we don't, you don't know if those assumptions and projections are right until you're done with the plan or 15 years down the road, you know? So it is, it's, these are all based off of assumptions and we're trying to like, you're trying to figure out like, okay, what gives us the best probability of success? Yeah. Well, uh, this interview was a great success. It's going to help a a good many people both. So I thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. All right. All right. Thank you, Bob. Thanks. Thanks again.